This is San Diego News Daily. I'm Monica Dean. Let's get right into your top local stories right now. A live look at San Diego International Airport where morning fog has caused some trouble. Take a look. There was a, a ground delay this morning due to the low visibility delaying most incoming and outgoing flights. More than 100 arriving flights have been delayed and about 80 departing flights. Residual problems could last through the day, so if you have a flight, make sure to check its status. Today, nurses at Rady Children's Hospital gave their 10 day intent to strike notice. That strike is set to start on Monday, July 22nd. For a 48 hour period, negotiations between the union and the hospital have been underway for months. The nurses say they are paid less than nurses at other area hospitals. Rady says its nurses are paid market rate and offered raises in the latest contract offer. Rady officials plan to bring in replacement nurses and use nurses who are not part of the union during the strike. Hundreds more affordable homes will soon be built in the city of San Diego. Today, Mayor Todd Gloria announced $20 million in new money for the Bridge to Home initiative. The program makes it easier for developers to build affordable housing by providing them with gap financing. This is the fourth round of funding since the program was launched about three years ago. Already, it has helped create nearly 1,400 homes. A controversial plan to help those experiencing homelessness has been given the OK from the California Coastal Commission. It involves plans for a safe parking site at the H Barracks. That's the area behind San Diego International Airport and across the Spanish Landing, across from Spanish Landing Park. The permit application sent to the Coastal Commission not only includes an outline for 190 parking spaces, but for two large sheltered tents that house 300 people. However, the city says they have no plans to add the tents at this moment. People living nearby have been opposed to that plan, saying the lot would be too close to schools and youth sports fields. The summer, as the months are getting hotter, the risks of wildfire are growing. More than 3,500 wildfires already burned through California just this year. That includes this one in Santa Barbara. The Lake Fire has grown to 29,000 acres. It is just 16% surrounded. Governor Gavin Newsom joined state and emergency state fire and emergency officials in Sacramento to provide an update on the state's readiness. He also thanked President Biden for his support in issuing emergency declarations, saying it wasn't always an easy process. We were able to secure the support from the White House without any politics, without any hesitation to support uh, our emergency requests. In the past, I'll remind you, that was not so easy. We had to make phone calls. We waited days and days. There was threats that we weren't going to provide support for the people of this great state. That's not the case today. There's a state of mind as it relates to the White House and their support to be here for the American people, regardless if they're in California or, or Oklahoma. California now has the largest aerial firefighting unit in the world. Chief Meteorologist Sheena Parveen joins us now with a look at your forecast. Hi, Sheena. Hey, Monica, it's going to be another hot day inland, so make sure you stay cool, stay hydrated. You still have to go to the beach for the relief. The beaches may actually see those lingering clouds again, like we saw yesterday, mid 70s, coastal communities near 80. So that's the coolest spot in the county. Inland, we still have the excessive heat warning for today for the desert, so that's going to go through tomorrow. So inland valleys mostly will be around 90 degrees. Some areas inland could be in the mid 90s. If you're in the foothills, though, you're going to be hotter, mid 90s to near 105, mountains as well. And those deserts still near 120 degrees. So make sure you stay hydrated before and during any outdoor activities. Avoid those peak hours though outside through the middle of the day and into the early afternoon when it's the hottest. Make sure the pets have fresh water and shade. And of course, never leave those kids or pets in a hot car. Here's what's going to happen though. We're finally going to be breaking out of this heat wave as we head into the weekend. Normal high inland is in the mid 80s. So we'll start to see that by the end of the weekend and into next week. More seasonable weather. I'll show you that 10 day forecast for everyone coming up. Thank you, Sheena. It is July 11th and you know what that means. It is Slurpee Day at 7-Eleven. To get your freebie, all you got to do is go to your local 7-Eleven for a free small cup. 7-Eleven is celebrating its 97th birthday this year. There is a chance you may have been ripped off while filling up your gas tank. The major settlement that could put some of that money back in your pocket. And we have some good news for some Hoover High students who want to take the next step and go to college. We'll have that story next as well. Stay with us.
NBC 7 News at 11 p.m. Ask the deeper questions about the day's big stories because you need more than just headlines. Now an update to a story we first brought you last night. We investigated to see what this could mean to you. It's our commitment to provide you with this fresh perspective every night because coverage you count on is only here. NBC 7 News at 11 p.m. This is San Diego News Daily. I'm Monica Dean. Welcome back. Two gas trading firms accused of secretly working together to manipulate California's gas prices could soon be forced to pay up. And anyone who purchased gas between February and November of 2015 could get a piece of the $50 million settlement. In 2015, the state says VTOL and Korea-based SK Energy Americas took advantage of an explosion at an oil refinery in Torrance to, quote, drive up gas prices for their own profit. The Attorney General's office says it affected 10 Southern California counties, including San Diego. VTOL and SK K did not admit to any legal wrongdoing, but the companies will have to pay $12.5 million in civil penalties and another $37.5 million to the Attorney General's office. Vitol and SK no longer operate in California, but if they return, they would need to follow stricter guidelines. Good news for some Hoover High School students who want to go to college. A ceremonial signing took place today to renew an agreement for guaranteed admission to San Diego State for those who qualify. Known as the College Avenue Compact, the agreement will go through the Hoover High Class of 2028. The program began with the Class of 2011 and secured spots for hundreds of students at SDSU who meet eligibility requirements. A shark that attacked a swimmer in Del Mar a little more than a month ago has been identified as a white shark. Caleb Adams was swimming with a group of friends when he was bitten. He is now recovering at home after the shark left significant wounds on his chest, left hand and arm. The shark lab at Cal State Long Beach identified the species. They say that based on the size of the bite, it's not surprising that it was a white shark. They have a bite that, that actually is unique in terms of the size of the bite and the size of the injuries. Compared to other species like soup fin sharks or leopard sharks, which occasionally bite people, but very rarely, but they also have very small teeth. Researchers at the Shark Lab say it's not uncommon to see white sharks near Del Mar and Torrey Pines because there's a juvenile nursery there. The lab has tagged about 40 juvenile white sharks in that area in the last two and a half years. Meanwhile, another shark sighting at Torrey Pines State Beach this week has some swimmers on edge. Warnings were lifted yesterday after a shark was spotted Tuesday. Park officials say that shark is about 10 feet long and was seen swimming beneath the surface of the water near Tower 6. They also say it did not interact with people in the water and its behavior is considered non-aggressive. NBC7 meteorologist Sheena Parveen will have a look at your weather forecast right after this. NBC7 and Telemundo 20's Chief Meteorologist Sheena Parveen bringing you the first alert of a tornado warning. If you're just tuning in, this is a tornado warning. This is for this area that you're seeing on the map. Constantly updating you. If you're in this area, make sure you seek shelter, interior hallway or closet. And staying with you until the potential for danger passed. We no longer have the tornado warning that was for East County. Chief Meteorologist Sheena Parveen and the first alert weather team. Coverage you count on. Hi there, I'm NBC7 meteorologist Sheena Parveen. We still have the excessive heat warning inland today for the deserts. That's going to continue into tomorrow for the coast. We're not looking at that kind of heat. And in fact, at the beaches, we may still see some lingering clouds like we did yesterday afternoon. Temperatures at the beaches about the mid to low 70s, coastal communities around 80. You go inland just a little bit, and that's where temperatures will be around 90 degrees, even the low 90s for the inland valleys, for the foothills and mountains, mid to upper 90s, near 100 degrees. Deserts still close to 120. As we head into the weekend, though, we're going to start to see these temperatures trend down, finally breaking out of this heat wave. Next week, we have more seasonable weather in the forecast, especially for those inland locations, so it's not going to be as hot. Mountains and deserts may see a slight chance of a shower over the weekend with temperatures finally starting to drop a bit, so that'll be much nicer even into next week. And the rest of the county may feel a little bit more humid as we head into the weekend. That's all because of some monsoonal moisture trying to move in. Thank you. Thanks for watching.